Hey everyone, so if you're shopping for Elise for a do-it-yourself project or if you're building something like a prototype, you will find, you'll see several different types of Elise at least. However, three key differences that um, are especially important too, with regards to, you know, making your, making life easier since you're working by hand is uh, to choose a type of relay that's most, uh, what's the word now, that's easiest to work with uh, by hand, so it's not something that's too small for example, or <laughs> and something that requires at least some amount of work just to get it running. So for example if you're using a Raspberry Pi like me, that's a Raspberry Pi 3 plus, uh, and you want to use it to control the relay module, I want to use it to control relays, uh, you could either use uh, a through hole circuit board mounted relay like this. Uh, so, this is obviously um, a good relay, but uh, as you can see by those little tiny pins, that it is uh, not really intended. That's more for manufacturing. It's not really ideal for working with bare hand, uh, although it's technically possible. It's just more work. So essentially what you could do is get uh, a relay module which is a board which incorporates the relays, uh, same through hole relays, uh, into a neat little package like this which is actually still quite small, uh, doesn't take up too much space, uh, which has the um, necessary transistors uh, and pin for your jumper wires uh, and your up to couplers uh, in some cases uh, so that you can safely connect it to your Raspberry Pi or your microcontroller and not only that but um, they are often designed uh, in the case of this one in, to be to operate on 3.3 or 5 volts so that your Raspberry Pi or microcontroller can directly power the relay module instead of having to hook, you know, essentially create a power supply circuit for a 12 volt relay for example these are very convenient and they have these, um, if I remember correctly, DIN rail style connectors, uh, well, screw terminals basically. So you can screw in um, fairly high gauge wires. Uh, and if you're controlling appliances, like, you know, maybe you want to use a Raspberry Pi to control an old washer or something, whatever it is. Uh, and. Um, Right. So, um, but do be careful which one you, which relay module you choose though, because uh, it may, um, like this one for example, it may require you to pull down the um, relay's pins, uh, control pin, in order to switch relay on, as opposed to some other relays uh, like this, which, um, you know, basically the opposite supply. You raise a voltage to the relays control pin here, and then that will switch on the coil. So um, I'm not sure why they made this one like that, but nevertheless, um, and I need to modify my code a little to make it work. So um, I'm going to show you the other type of relay now, which is suitable for other projects. It's a 12 volt coil relay though, so that's not nearly as microcontroller friendly, but nevertheless, uh, hold on. It's more repairable. So this is the type of relay I'm referring to. Um, my apologies for the poor visibility on the wires here. So this type of relay has a nice base, nice sturdy base with screw terminals. It's also the most expensive by far of the three that I mentioned, but it's very easy to replace. So repairability is um, probably a top priority in the case of this design. Let me see if I can just demonstrate um, the best part of it. I haven't played this out in a while, but basically if you need to replace it, you can just unplug it. Huh? And then uh, it, uh, right, it, mm -hmm. and then carry it to any electrical store. And this uh, is a very standard design, so you won't have any trouble finding a replacement. You can just carry it to any electrical supply store and then show them 
buy a new one and then you can just plug in the new one and essentially you are done. So um and so the coil is uh, 12 volts uh, so that's not very convenient uh, for microcontroller products unless uh, you already have a 12 volt circuit set up fairly and, uh, yeah, um, but not all projects involve microcontrollers so this type of relief should definitely be considered for projects in which 12 volt switching is available. Thanks for watching.